Welcome, everyone. We are live tonight. <sighs> right here on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Fanbase. Tonight's lecture is about the story of Judas. Hmm. You want to buckle in for this one. This one is from December the 4th, 1959. We tell you here that we believe you can be what you want to be in this world. And that is my purpose to tell you. If I have moments in my life, I regret it. Not in the sense of a change of mind as in the word repent. Still, I must tell you. I may have moments of regret that you have misused this power for any purpose. Yet it is better that you misuse it rather than not to use it. How many times one feels concerned at the misuse of this principle? Yet it is better to misuse it than to bury it. For even by the misuse we learn, though painfully. In the story of the talents, it was only the one who did not use it that was condemned. We are living in a world that is like a play. And some seem from birth to be cast in a difficult role. And yet you tell him that God is infinite love. But he is the playwright and the casting director, for this is a play. As Shakespeare says, all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. We have our exits and we have our entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts. But that time is not three score and twenty. It is the time it takes to awaken that man, the perfect actor, or God. So I play every part. But playing every part does not mean I play every man or woman in the world. There are billions of actors, but only so many parts. And every part you and I must play. The central figure, the star, is Christ. And the whole play is about Christ from Genesis to Revelation. But there are many parts that reveal it. There are 12 main characters. The 12 disciples. And the 4 and 20 elders. And the high priest, uh, Cephas, and his political opponent, Pilate. These are in every age and every time. The purpose of the play is to awaken in us the actor, God. These actors of the Bible are not people. They never walked the earth as people. We play all the characters, but they do not live any more than Hamlet lived. When Olivier plays Hamlet, Hamlet can do nothing but what Olivier does. And then Olivier can, if he wishes, play another character altogether. The characters are the eternal states of the soul. But we must learn to distinguish the man from the characters he is playing. The characters are real in eternity, and we assume the character and play it on this sphere. To say that everything in this world is a play does disturb, but I want you to believe it. Tonight I want to discuss the most difficult of all the characters, and if asked, you would refuse to play that role. But it is the most important, for until it is played, Christ cannot awaken within you. It is the character of Judas. People say he is the betrayer. But to be able to betray, I must first hold the secret. So I betray you into the hands of your enemies. I reveal you, for that is what betray means. Only he who knows God could reveal God. Only Judas did not leave Jesus in the garden. The others left him, but Judas remained to reveal him or betray him. And then Judas commits suicide. But we are told, no man takes away my life, but I lay it down myself. So who is Judas? Until that character is played. Christ is not awakened in the mind of man. He reveals God. 
Then he repented. When he found that those to whom he revealed the Lord spat at him and reviled him and condemned him. It does not mean upon a man. It is a symbol. But I say the time will come when you will not repent. Even though you will be concerned as to the consequences of your act. The word is only translated six times in this form. Paul wrote a bitter letter to the Corinthians and he said, I do not repent or change my attitude toward you. And another time when Jesus is made a member of the order of Melchizedek, he says, I do not repent. But in this case, when Judas reveals the Lord to the world, he repents. For he sees what they did with the knowledge. Not something done to a man. For Christ is invisible. For he is the Lord and the Lord is spirit and spirit is without form. You tell the world who he is as man. Invisible reality. And then when you see that they spit in his face figuratively. Then you are concerned for the consequences of your betrayal of the identity of God. Judas is not a man any more than Christ is a man. Christ is the invisible reality. And all the others are states. And we move into states. A state is a mood. But when you are cast in the role of Judas, you are at the end of the play. And the play is over. You betray the identity of the creative power of the universe. And then you commit suicide. You hang yourself upon a tree. As he betrays him, he becomes the very being that he betrays. Now Judas comes from the same form as the word Judah. It means the hand. It is the first symbol in the name of God or the Hebrew symbol Yod, the hand of worship, the hand of the creator. Then the second name of Judas is Iscariot. It means man. Cariot means to lay timber or the carpenter. So Judas betrays the Lord, for no one knew him. But Judas told them, when I kiss him, you will know him. And yet Jesus had said to them, I have been with you three years and you do not know me? The others ran when he was arrested. But the one who knew him kissed him and said, Do not let him go. And that is your imagination. For that is Christ. There is no other. Christ in man is man's own wonderful human imagination. And with Christ all things are possible. Again, Christ in man is man's own wonderful human imagination. And with Christ, all things are possible. So you can take this revelation and go out and be anything you want to be. If using this power, I go out and take advantage of another, it means my misuse of what I have just heard. But the one who tells you and then sees what you do with it, They often repent. So the story is told you that they spat on him. Not a man. For who can spit on imagination? Not knowing there is no other. We are all one. This is spitting on Christ or putting stripes upon him. Not on his body, for he is invisible. For my father is spirit and spirit is invisible. So the most difficult to play is that of Judas or the betrayer. And if the playwright were casting the play, no one would volunteer to play it. But one has to go out and betray God by telling his identity. And to the degree that you can do it, you will prove it by the behavior of those to whom you tell it. For all the characters of the Bible are true as states or moods, and they live forever. God sends his sons through these characters as actors that at the end of time, he may awaken these actors as himself. You are infinitely greater than any character in the Bible. 
for they are states. But there is another one that is not a state, and that is Christ. And he is being awakened in you. Christ is God, and he is awakening in every being in the world. He has prepared a play to awaken every child born of woman and to create like his father. He has to go through every experience and they are all written in the Bible. So they are the 12 and the four and 20. And there is always the political power and the religious power and the wise men called the Sadducees and those who conform to that which they think will make them important in the eyes of man the Pharisees. Then there are those who have mechanical talents. You can take from the inspired works of a Shakespeare or a Blake and write many books, but they could not write one thought that is original, and they are the scribes. Then there is the multitude who hail the hero today and then stone him the next. So the eleven could not commit you know, or in other words, let go of everything they had ever heard regarding causation. So the 11 could not let go of everything they had ever heard regarding causation. That is everything that you previously thought you must let go of and die to and live only to the Christ. And so you read the statement of Paul that he comes to teach only one thing and he got it from Revelation. It is true. It comes by a vision. But then the Sadducees will laugh at you. We have this now in our midst as they talk about evolution and the world has accepted it. Yet I am told that God created all things and called them good and wondrous. All were distinct acts of creation. I have nothing to do with anything less than man. But everything less than man only bears witness to what I am. I did not evolve through all the animals. That is true only as related to human affairs. I see it move from the canoe to the ocean liner, from the plow to the tractor, from the cave to the palace. Evolution is only in the affairs of men. The bird builds its nest as it first built it, and it is fixed and perfect. But the things of form evolve. But this is not man, this body. This is only the mask or persona. I am all imagination. And I wear this mask until I go through all the parts. And then I am he. For the purpose of the play is to awaken us. For God alone acts in all existing beings and men. The purpose of the play is to make us actors, even bad ones, if we are bad ones, the one who reveals the secret repents, yet he would not change it. We are told that when Judas came and kissed Jesus, that Jesus said to him, friend, why are you here? The translators could not bring themselves to believe the actual translation, so they put it in the footnote. What you have to do, do it. The actual translation is, what you must do, do it quickly. You have to do it. You have to tell the world who God is and that he is imagination. But the translator used the sentence, why are you here? Everyone is an actor awakening. So I say to everyone, you are playing all the part. And I hope you will start to play the part of Judas. You did not come to play just one part. Everyone plays many parts. You can, if you will, slip into this part of Judas. He could play Cephas or Pilate forever and think that causation is external or is in the hands of the political or the religious powers or the great universities. Until it comes the understanding of true causation. You do not know it, but I know who I am and who you are. Every being is God in different states, all playing these wonderful parts. 
But when he awakens, he is God. And no matter what he has ever done, he is forgiven. When he awakes, he is as white as snow, no matter how scarlet things were. I ask you to take this revelation of God, who is your own wonderful human imagination. Well, that is what Judas tells you. And I am playing his part. He is not a man, but a state into which I have entered deliberately and consciously. For no one can betray God unless he knows the secret. We are told in Corinthians, who knows the thoughts of a man but the spirit of man who dwells in him? Well, who could reveal or betray God but he who knows his secret? But if you know it and you test and prove it, then you are commissioned to go out and betray God. You go out and betray the secret of creation. This body is a tree he comes to do it and he had to do it he went out and hanged himself to a tree because why this body is a tree he comes to do it and he has to do it but when he stands aghast at the use to which they put this secret <laughs> hmm, then the next stage is to awaken completely as christ we do not yet know what we shall be like, but when we see him, we will know him, for we will be like him. You will be like the very being you were sent to betray. Everyone here will play every character in eternity. I do not mean people. They will go through all the characters, for the characters are eternal states distinguish man who is all imagination from his present state you can forgive him anything knowing he is playing a part written for him by God we are all players in God's play you can go back and see the parts you have been playing from the cradle until now if you were given a vision, you would now this moment see in human form the state that I am playing. You would see it, and yet it is not a man, but only a state. I have seen people in argument, and over them you see figures in contention. They are only playing states. And as they forgive and shake hands, these would vanish. A gentleman sat here the other night and he wrote to me. He said, Neville, as you began to speak, I saw over your shoulder a patriarch who wore the black hat and robes of a priest. I do not know who he was, but I feel he is a great inspiration to you. Well, this is true. For I entered a certain state. I was speaking about the foundation stone, and that state was personified as a man. I was telling you that the foundation stone of everything is imagining and not to leave that and go in search of another foundation. And here, this gentleman saw a being who was to him a patriarch expressing what I was talking about. I know it is true, for I am never alone. But you are infinitely greater than the state for you are a living center of imagining. You can move through all the states. You are not the... They build churches to Peter or to John, etc. They are being built only to states, and the states are eternally dead until the Son of God gives them life. When you enter the state of contention, it is then alive. But if you are not in the state of contention, it is dead. They do not build churches to Judas. I lived on a little tiny island and they divided it into 11 parishes <laughs> named for the disciples, but there is no Judas. This is true. Barbados does have 11 parishes and Judas is not one of them. My forefathers did not know he was the most important for only he could deliver God and for only he could discover God and betray him.
They call him one who betrays a friend. They call him a Judas. But in Matthew 26, Jesus calls him friend. And then he said, what you have to do, do quickly. He did not call the others friend. He called Peter Satan. But to Judas, he said, betray me. And then often those to whom the secret is revealed begin to use it wrongly. They discover imagination creates reality. And disliking someone, they will imagine something bad and by their very intensity bring it to pass. You can see this in a horrible way. So we are told he repented or was deeply concerned as to the consequences of his act. You can be what you want to be in this world. And those who recoil from this truth are its enemies and do not know it. Well, millions will recoil from it, but that is all right, for they have not yet reached the point where they can be cast in the role where they will take it and go out and betray God. You can betray God only by revealing him. You will not know him by anything the scribes or the Pharisees will tell you, but only by inner revelation. And when you are fully persuaded, you will go and tell it. Then whenever the day comes to close this eye and take off this mask, you will awake among the giants of those who are awakened, but none will fail. For everyone in eternity will finally awaken. So if I have to play a part over and over until I am buried in the part, I will be buried until I learn I am the actor and not the part I am playing. Isaiah 40, verse 6, it seems so strange that the book that forms the foundation of the play should make this statement. It says, all flesh is grass and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. And the word is the play from Genesis to Revelation. If you took all the Bibles and burned them, the play remains in spite of the written record. Well, we hear so much about goodness. Well, few can define it since no two ages have the same concept. I do not teach you to be good, but to be creative in expressing this latent talent. Or but to be creative in expressing this great talent. Do not bury it, even if in using it you make mistakes. Prove it in your own life and then go out and tell others. No priesthood could send you or have the power to send you out. Or no holy water will send you out. You are sent by God and God is spirit. So if you feel moved to do it, do not hesitate. And if you make mistakes and I hear of them, I may feel for a moment that I wish you had not. But I will not really regret that I told you of the identity of God. Your human imagination is God and is one with that which sustains the universe. When you see it, you go out and betray or reveal it. Judas means hand, and that becomes the first letter of the name of the creator, yod he vav he We are told that Judas betrayed his Lord for 30 pieces of silver, and then he was said to have turned it back to the priest. They bought the potter's field. It means maker. It appears 62 times as maker. It is used only a few times as potter. It means maker in the sense of one that is a craftsman, as a goldsmith or a silversmith. It means that the individual is a maker. So he took the fullness of the price of God. For 30 means fullness. He went through every furnace. For no one playing Judas could skip one. So he paid the price. And then he threw it to the potter. 
Well, she he should have thrown it to the silversmith. But the same word translated as silversmith is also translated potter. I pay the full price to discover that my imagination is God, and then I die to all I formerly believed, and then tell it to the populace, and then have them deny it and spit on him, etc. Well, it has nothing to do with anything taking place on earth. Go out. Think about it. And determine to make yourself the person you want to be. Then betray this secret and tell others what you have discovered. Imagine the loveliest things in this world for yourself or for another. So let us now go into the silence. And when you break it, knowing that imagining is God, let no one persuade you there is any other cause for phenomena. Go through these doors knowing it is so. And then you will not be impatient, but you will let it be so. For God creates reality. The Father walks through the world with me and I do not know it. I do not know that the imaginal activity is the cause of what appears in my world. See, so tonight as you sit here and you hear these words, he says, imagine the loveliest things in this world for yourself or for another. And so when you enter into that stillness, that silent space, and you allow your imagination to play the role you've put it into. When you see that what it is you have created comes into physical being, he says, go out and tell it. Go out and betray who God is. Show people who God is. You see, this is also related to the other scripture, go ye into the word and make disciples of all men. To disciple means to show. To show someone how to be. That is what the word disciple means. Thus, to discipline means to show someone how to be. What are you showing people? You're not telling them, do this and do that. And this is how it's done. You are saying, listen, I was desperate and I was in need. But I realized that I had the power to, to free myself. And here's how I did it. So today, if you are struggling, here's how you break free. That is how you betray the presence of God to men. By showing them that God is their own wonderful human imagination. So be a Judas tonight. Be a Judas. Because there's somebody you know in your world who wants to experience something more lovely than they are presently experiencing. So if you have experienced imagining creates reality, if you've deliberately experienced it, which means, a.k.a. you have manifested something in your life, well, tell somebody. We have friends. But the funny thing is, you notice how he says your friends may scoff or spit at it and go, oh, please. You're crazy. But all the while, that same friend remembers what you used to be like. So it says, you don't have to force anything. Not in the least bit. You can just remain patient. Why would you be patient? Because you know that God creates reality. And what is God? your imagination. You see, sometimes when we hear the word imagination, we get a little confused. But let me put it clearly for you. You know, when you go back into your memories and you remember something, whether that thing is good, bad, or indifferent, but you remember it nonetheless, you are using your imagination. You are remembering something. 
and that thing is invisible, is it not? It's imaginary. I can't see it. You can see it. You are remembering what happened. So when you remember something, you are using your imagination. That is one instance where you can use your imagination. The other instance is when you say, hmm, I wonder what it would be like if you are using your imagination. So imagination is not pretending, it is not make-believe. It is making believe. What are you making? You're making the image that you want to see in the world. But it is not pretense. It's not, well, I'm just going to sit here and wish. No. You begin to experience. Because you see, pay attention. When you have a memory that you recall, you feel it in your body, don't you? Depends on what that memory is, good, bad, or indifferent. The moment you recall that memory, you have the same visceral response as it was happening right here, right now, again. See? So the moment, because we did this in last night's lecture, the moment you go through those memories again and you have that physical response, that visceral response. You're planting a seed right there and right then. Even though you don't know it, that's exactly what you're doing. So now, instead of just going through life unwittingly, go through life deliberately by choosing what you will think about thereby what you will feel, and then what you will experience. So you see that simple process? When you go out and you share it with another, you betray the identity of God. You say, oh, look, there he is, and you kiss him. See? That's how we betray the identity of God. And remember who God is, your own wonderful human imagination. So tonight, as you put your head on your pillow, commune with yourself, commune with your own heart upon your bed. Perhaps you've been hearing that imagining creates reality, but you're still, Elizabeth, a little bit hesitant to try it. Here's some good news for you. You are already doing it. You are already using your imagination to create every single experience you have right now. You just don't know it. But if you say, hmm, let me be deliberate. I will begin to experience in imagination what I would like to experience in reality. You want to be bold, you want to be confident, then see yourself walking and talking that way. But don't just, remember when I say see yourself, what we're talking about. You're the dancer in the mirror. The dancer in the mirror is doing two things. Well, three. <laughs> He's remembering the moves. He's practicing the moves. And he's watching himself remember and practice. So he's not the instructor just sitting there saying, no, stop and do it again. That's not what he's doing. He is an active participant. So you too must be the active participant within your imagination. Hear what you want to hear. See what you want to see. Speak the words. You have that person that you might be afraid to say something to. If you had the courage, what would you say to them? 
Ah. Well, practice saying it and see how it makes you feel. In the beginning, you may still quiver and have butterflies, but the more you rehearse it, the more confident you become so that you go out and you will have the experience of saying those very words that you have rehearsed. So you see my beautiful friends, you have exactly what it takes. Why? Because God put himself in you. And then you see what you're capable of. Go out into the world and betray the identity of God. And the identity of God is your own wonderful human imagination. Now I think you have a better comprehension of what imagination means. Image. Image in the mind's eye. <laughs> Hello, Cyber. Checkmate. <laughs> Amani. And for the others who have not made themselves known here tonight on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, I see you. Fan base. I am KZ. That deal. Fawn, Flow, Smiles, and eh, Oracle Treehouse. I was thinking of you because I was going to say because I heard it in my head, I just didn't say it. For those of you who may not know, Oracle Treehouse needed her lawn cut. She just needed it cut. And she told us, I don't know what to do because the person who normally would didn't show and so we don't know what to do. And she said, I will just see it as cut. And in 24 hours, she comes back to tell us that it's been cut. She betrayed the identity of God because she told you what she wanted and she told you how she accomplished it. And she told you how she accomplished it. She saw it as being done because she knows that God is her imagination. So you see, this is the true meaning of Judas. <laughs> and yes, if you paid attention a little bit, he had his interjections in there too, him and his little noises. But I trust tonight that as you put your head on the pillow, know what you want to be. I don't care if you think it's impossible or not. That's not your business, whether it's impossible. Why? Because all things are possible to God, then who is God? Your wonderful human imagination. That is who God is. So tell me again how it's impossible. Oh, I'm not coming for you. I'm coming for me. Don't fret. <laughs> Don't fret. So when you put your head on that pillow, what do you want to be? See yourself. Act it out. Most importantly, it'll make you feel a particular way. <laughs> Especially if you're one who wants to be confident and bold. Or you'll, you'll begin to feel that. And the moment you feel it, you have been mentally impregnated. Allow yourself to simply retreat into the bosom of sleep. I love you, and I trust that tonight, because we got to go through the weekend, right? Remember, for the love of God on all things, remember to practice. What are you going to practice? Knowing what you want and being like the dancer in the mirror. You remember what you need to do, and you watch yourself do it. And then when you do it, you see how it makes you feel like you've accomplished it. You see that feeling of accomplishment. Rest in that. You see, sometimes you want to feel happy all day. Please, come on. Ain't nobody going to feel happy all day. But there's one thing you will know all day, every day. 
that my imagination is God and imagining creates reality. See, if you know that, well, shoot, you could be in the bowels of hell and you'll pluck your way out. You don't need to be happy to pluck your way out of hell. You just need to know how to get out of hell. You're God. Whether you rise, I gotta sing it. One, Psalm 139, verse 9 and 10. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. Psalm 139, verse 9 and 10. That's how you memorize scripture. Well, that's how I memorized scripture when I was a little girl. Sing it and you'll remember it. So it doesn't matter how high you go or how low you go. Ain't no mountain high enough. <laughs> right? Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Why not? <laughs> because God is within you. When you look in the mirror, you see in God. Hello. So how can you be separated from God? <laughs> you can't be. So don't fret about that. Don't worry about, oh my God, I feel like I've done so many bad things. It's a state. And you can move from one state to the other. So be encouraged tonight, my beautiful friends. Be encouraged tonight. And know that God is your wonderful human imagination. Yes? <gasps> Brandon! Listen to what Brandon said. He said, people say not to manifest a specific person. He said, I blew 20 years in the assumption and it worked. Imagination does create reality. Brandon is doing what? Betraying the identity of God by telling you that imagining creates reality. Brandon, welcome. Welcome. It is good to see you. Nice to meet you. Because <laughs> I've never said your name before. Uh -uh, I have not. And if I have not forgotten, forgive me. <laughs> right? Anyhow, my beautiful friends, you know, parting is really such sweet sorrow. It's hard. Listen, I get so excited about this. It is hard for me to leave <laughs> because I just get truly so excited. I do. I get excited about sharing. Hmm. So, if I tarry, it's only because I love you. <laughs> Anywho, I don't want to keep you because it is a Friday night. And I still got to make some beignets from the batch I have left over. So, you know, we're going to have some hot tea and some warm uh, cinnamon sugar or icing sprinkle, icing sugar sprinkled beignets. And I go relax. And maybe, hmm, I don't know, I'll watch something. I, who, listen, who knows? But a little bit, and I bid you good night. He's not even in, so squirrel jumped out of his bed. He's right next to me for, don't poop on my bed, boy. Anywho, <laughs> I love you all. Imagining does create reality. Does create reality. Go ahead, Oracle Treehouse. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I love you and enjoy your beignets. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I will enjoy my beignets and think of you. <laughs> and that way you get the experience to enjoy them as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But of course, darling, of course. <laughs> Imani, thank you too. And you have a great weekend. Imani says, have a great weekend, everyone. So, yes. Anywho, itty bitty. Oh, where are you? Where's your face? There you are. He's black, so he blends into the darkness. <laughs> but he's here. All right, y'all. Rest well. Good night.